This video explains how to convert an XTS time series object to a data frame object using the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. In this video, I will show you an example. And for this example, we first need to create a time series object. And in order to create a time series object, we first need to install and load the XTS package, as you can see in lines two and three of the code. I have installed this package already, so for that reason I'm just going to load it with the line 3 of the code. And after running this line of code, we can apply the XTS function to create a time series object, as you can see in lines 5 to 11. So after running these lines of code, a new time series object is appearing at the top right, which is called MyTS. And we can also print this time series to the bottom in the RStudio console by running line 12 of the code. And then you can see that we have created a time series object containing six different dates and six different corresponding values. We can also check the class of this data object using the class function, as you can see in line 14 of the code. And then you can see that our data object currently has the XTS class. Now, let's assume that we want to convert this time series object to the data frame class. Then we can use the s.data.frame function, as you can see in line 16 of the code. And within this function, we simply need to specify the name of our time series object. So in this case, our time series is called myTS. And then I'm also assigning the output of the s.dataFrame function to a new data object that I'm calling data1. So after running line 16 of the code, you can see that this new data object data1 is appearing at the top right. And we can also print this data object to the bottom in the RStudio console by running line 17 of the code. And then you can see that the structure of our data has changed because now this new data set has a variable name which corresponds to the values of our time series and we have the dates as row names. Now we can also check the class of this new data object by running the class function as you can see in line 19 of the code and then you can see that we have successfully converted our time series object to the data frame class. Now we could also modify this data frame to add the dates of our data frame as a new column to the data frame. And we can do that as you can see in lines 21 to 24. So in line 21, I'm first duplicating our data frame because I also want to keep an original version of our data frame. So after running this line of code, a new data set called data2 is created. And then in the next step, I'm creating a new column in this data frame that I'm calling dates. And to this column, I'm assigning the row names of our data frame. So if you run line 22 of the code, our data set is updated. And now it also contains a dates column. And then in the next step, we can also remove the row names of our data frame by using the row names function and by assigning null to the row names. So after running line 23 of the code, our data set is updated once again and we can see the final output by running line 24 of the code. And now you can see that we have created a data frame containing six rows. These rows are named based on the row numbers. Then we have a first column which is called V1 and this column contains the values of our data set. And then we have another column which is called dates and this column contains the dates of our time series. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage, I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.